Hello everyone and uh, uh, welcome to today's session of the European Startup Prize. My name is Gregory Murley. I'm the managing director of the European Startup Prize and we're here together for one hour and a half uh, with uh, uh, what I would say interesting meetups uh, with our partners uh, TomTom and Neurotran. Uh, in order to create new uh, uh, opportunities for cooperation and to help your startup grow. Um, I will just make a very brief introduction for this session, but because I know you're not, you're not here for me, but I, 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 I still wanted to tell you a little bit more about uh, the Open Startup Prize. Uh, as you might know already, we are, uh, we are a three years old acceleration program. It was first funded by the European Union together with uh, a few companies from the private sector. Uh, Boston Consulting Group is one of them. The French uh, venture capital uh, VID is one of them. And some major uh, transportation uh, corporations uh, that are also European. And after three years, I think I think I can proudly say uh, that we are the biggest acceleration program from the European Union with a yearly 500 to 600 applications uh, from sustainable uh, mobility startups. So we are very proud that uh, this year again, and despite everything, despite the, diff the difficult times, um, we we manage to keep our community of startups alive. But uh, as you know, and we all know this year is different. So we turned our acceleration program into a reinvestment program. What does it mean? It means that um, we, will we will provide you with new investment opportunities. We thought it would only make sense that this year we focus on investment. Uh, so the European Investment Bank is going to be part of the game. EIT, Inno Energy and EIT Urban Mobility are now screening our community of startups uh, with a special focus on our top 50 from this year. Um, we are, uh, in addition to those opportunities for investment, we are also drafting a political statement uh, from our community of startups that's called the manifesto because we want to address to the European decision makers uh, uh, this uh, statement and, and, and tell them, underline to them what startups, uh, what kind of help startups really need for now. Um, so all in one, uh, we want to create for you new opportunities and we want to make this uh, uh, webinar useful for you. So uh, we'll have uh, two moments uh, for, this, uh, for this virtual meetup. The first help uh, will be devoted to TomTom -tom Solutions. So it's, I think, a great opportunity for you to meet and ask all uh, your questions to uh, our partner TomTom. TomTom -tom. Tom -tom already uh, gave uh, for so some of you already received uh, 1 million APIs from TomTom -tom as part of the top 50, and we are very uh, uh, grateful for that. And for the other, I think it should really be an option uh, to consider for your own business. So, Luis and Jose from TomTom -tom will have 45 minutes to convince you that uh, they are good. Uh, partners for cooperation, for a future cooperation with you. And on the second half, uh, you will have, you will be given the opportunities to better understand uh, the galaxy uh, of EU fundings. So the Open Startup Prize covers a very small part of all the EU fundings uh, which do exist. There is much more than that. There is much more also because of the COVID uh, this, and there is much more also because during this uh, new presidency of the European Union, uh, there is a very strong uh, emph emphasis um, on uh, smart and green solution uh, under the framework of the of the Green Deal. So it feels that uh, 
uh, it, we, we, we would all need an update about these European programs. So for this, we, we have the, the support of Dan and Bastien from the Eurotrend uh, consultancy firm, who is based in Brussels and will lecture us about all uh, these uh, EU, uh, EU fundings. At the end of both of these questions, you will be given the occasions to uh, ask uh, uh, questions directly to our speakers. And without further notice, I suggest that we dive into the water and I will give the floor uh, to Tom Tom to start with. Thank you all for being there and uh, see you at the question and answers. Hey guys, can you hear us? Please confirm you can hear us and uh, we're going to take over. Yes. Top -top. Great. Cool. Here. Great display. Hey, so um, yeah, jumping yeah. over. Uh, sorry, Greg is, seems to be having uh, some technical difficulties. Uh, so no intro for us, so I'll do it. So my name is Louis. I'm the head of uh, product marketing for uh, TomTom Enterprise and Developers. I'll tell you a bit more about what it is. And I'm here with Jose who's our developer advocate. And um, we're very excited to be uh, here today to present to you uh, what we do around APIs uh, for mobility startups uh, like yours. So maybe uh, uh, a couple of words about TomTom. Tom. You probably remember us uh, for those GPS devices that we uh, made very, very popular in uh, the early 2000s. Uh, some could argue that we were one of the first real mobility European startup. Um, fortunately for us, 20 years later, uh, this is not what we do. Uh, this was yesterday. Today, we're focusing on uh, location technology. Uh, we're one of the remaining independent uh, map makers in the world, and we, uh, we continue to uh, innovate with our users. There's about 1 billion users that are using our technology today. Um, they're not directly using it, uh, knowing it, but they might be using uh, inside some of their products, like their iPhones. Uh, like the Microsoft products that they use uh, as part of their Uber applications as well. So um, today at TomTom, Tom, we um, our core business is to provide maps. So we are one of the few companies in the world that make and produce a global digital map um, of the world. So we try to really create a, a digital database of uh, map uh, data with a lot of attributes that are useful for different use cases. On top of that, we collect traffic information from about 600 to 650 million connected devices on the road that are sharing data uh, with us about where they're going, at what speed. And that allows us to create a very interesting layer of information, uh, of real-time traffic information, also historical traffic uh, information so that we can a bit predict the future. Uh, we also use these traces, of course, to improve uh, our own maps. And on top of that, we've been investing in software components. Uh, of course, there's our navigation technology, but there's also uh, the Maps APIs, which I am uh, going to present to you today with Jose. So the Maps APIs, it's, uh, it's a portfolio of uh, REST APIs and software development kits um, that basically allows you to add location into uh, any type of application, be it web or mobile. So of course, it often starts with a map, displaying a map inside of your application. Um, so we offer APIs and SDKs for that. Then there's directions, getting people places. This is something that is core to the expertise of TomTom. Tom. Of course, we've been doing it for a number of years. So we've packed all that experiences, uh, that experience that we have, that expertise that we have um, into one routing APIs, which can do wonderful things. This is probably something you want to check out if you're in the mobility space. Before you get people, places, you need them to find those places, of find course. Place, yes. And that's why we have a series of uh, APIs around places, which is basically a global search engine to find addresses uh, up to the uh, delivery doors, of course, uh, but also places like restaurants, hotels. Um, if you followed our recent news, we've announced uh, recently a partnership with Foursquare, which now allows us to offer you all the Foursquare POIs with the ratings, the reviews, the price ranges, the pictures. Um, we've also, we're also adding more types of information like uh, electric vehicle charging stations with real time availability in a number of countries. Um, our traffic data, we also expose it via APIs. Um, so you can get, of course, a view on where 
uh, road closures, traffic jams, accidents are happening on the networks, but you can also, thanks to our traffic flow mm -hmm. information, get uh, an ID of the real time average speed that we measure on the, any road segment out there. So that's very cool. Uh, it's up to date, updated every sec uh, 60 seconds. Then on top of that, we realized that a lot of companies, they wanted to do tracking, but without the creepy uh, tracking. So we decided to build uh, some safe components uh, to track your users without necessarily sharing their data with an advertising company. Uh, so we have a service that allows you to store the location of the assets that you're tracking in a, in a safe way by making sure it's not shared with anybody else. And we have a useful geofencing service that allows you to create uh, this nice customer experience of, you know, getting a text when your driver is approaching with your yeah. parcel or your food. All of this, we wrap that in um, in software development kits, uh, just to make it easier for you guys to, to develop for your target platforms, Android, iOS, JavaScript. It comes with libraries, documentation, code samples, anything you need to uh, get to market as fast as you can. So this tech is uh, already used by a, a number of uh, very large customers, which we're very proud to have as partners. Microsoft Azure is one. Um, they decided to take our APIs and to um, to use it to power their Azure Maps offering um, and a lot of Microsoft uh, products. Verizon more recently uh, also decided to build their new location platform uh, based on our TomTom Maps APIs. Uh, we have all the companies like Trivago, Alteryx, Mishna in Europe, uh, who are doing a lot of uh, interesting things using some uh, or all of our APIs, depending on their needs. Um, but key to offering is not only to make it accessible to these large customers, but to make it as easy and as accessible uh, to everyone, which is one of the reasons we're talking to you today. So uh, we built a developer platform uh, at developer.tomtom.com, where our approach is really to make location technology uh, as easy as possible. So um, you can create an account immediately. Uh, as I speak, you can go and create your account. You just need an email address, no credit card and you immediately get an API key and you can start playing, exploring. You, know, you find a lot of things there, of course, the documentation, but also inspiration on our blog uh, and on our tutorials. You also find uh, personalized support or our forum if you want to uh, ask Correct. questions mm -hmm. to uh, other users. So all in all, we're, uh, we're trying to build a, a different platform. We're trying to build a European alternative to the, the maps that, uh, that are dominating the market right now. Uh, so we're really uh, focused on, on helping you standing out uh, and uh, offering something that's a bit different, that has a different flavor. We're ad free, of course, we're a, a professional map maker, so our business model is not based on advertising, uh, which means that we respect your privacy and that of your users. That's very important to the, the, the TomTom DNA. We're also trying to be very flexible in the sense that you can use our APIs and, and match them with uh, APIs from other uh, mapping providers. Uh, let's say you like a routing, but you want to use the map display uh, from OpenStreetMaps. Um, we're happy with that. It's your choice. It's your app. You should be uh, making the choices that are best for you. Uh, even though we recommend using uh, our full stack because you'll get better results. Uh, but we really want to offer you that creative freedom. And um, freedom is, of course, about our freemium model. We offer you a certain number of transactions per day for free. And on top of that, if you use our mobile SDKs on iOS and Android, uh, the maps and traffic display is on us, uh, unlimited, which means that as your app grows, you don't have to worry about you know, going from 1,000 users to 100,000 users, at least for the maps and the traffic display, it's on us. And uh, of course, points. cherry on the top of the cake yeah. uh, for those uh, top 50 EU startups that made it to the uh, to the finals this year. Congratulations! We're really happy to uh, to offer one million free credits. Uh, there was an email sent, so uh, if you missed that email, just reach out to us, and uh, I'll explain to you how to claim your prize. There's a lot of unique features uh, that you'll find in the TomTom Maps API offering. I'm not going to go into details right now because uh, Jose will do that. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. with cool demos and uh, and more details. Um, before before continuing, how about how about having a small pause and check uh, how is everybody doing? How is the sound coming on? And if the are you also watching the presentation? Okay. Good. Thank you, Dan. Yeah. Good. Good. We continue. Great. Um, excuse me. Yes. Do you take questions? Uh, yes, we have as, uh, a small, at, the end. at the end, we have small like amount of uh, 10 to 15 minutes for questions. Yeah. 
Feel free to right. type. I, I put chat. mine in the chat. All right, thank you. Also in the chat, yes, good idea. Yeah, thanks. <clears throat> Go back to the slide. So yes, well, how do we use it on top of CPS for mobility? Nothing. Yeah, so uh, Jose and I are going to go through uh, three main use cases. We, we decided to select uh, a few ones that we believe are the most important for you guys. Uh, it's not exhaustive, of course. The first one is about impressing your user, because uh, in most mobility uh, applications, there's a customer application, thinks about your Uber app. The first thing you open, you see when you open that Uber app is a map and a search engine. So Jose is going to tell you about what we can do there. Then there's the, the machine, uh, the backend, uh, where you optimize your operations. And this is where route calculations are very Pretty adapted important. to your, the type of vehicles that you're driving or operating. But also travel times and ETAs, uh, we found based on our experience, are extremely important. And this is where we have also cool uh, technology around electric <clears throat> mobility, range calculations, fuel consumption. Jose will show you uh, a few tricks there. And then last but not least, sorry, uh, oh, sorry we yeah, have the, the tracking, tracking part, tracking which, part yes. which I hope we'll have time to go through. And it's all about hey, making sense of those traces that you get from the, uh, the drivers that you're tracking uh, and making sense of uh, that data that's coming in uh, using the location data of TomTom. Cool. So uh, this, the story here is the first use case that we have in, in, a, in, a, in our idea for uh, mobility is, of course, we have the way to show your, use, your users the best experience possible. So for example, in uh, say this image, I think this is Uber, yeah? Uber, yeah. Yeah, so what the first thing you see within Uber is a map-centric application with just a search uh, input data there. So you, you have, um, with TomTom, -Tom you can provide not only the, okay, not only the maps and tiles are free on, on mobile, but also we have a very um, powerful engine routing um, for, for routings and creating these applications and also the search API. It was also now powered to create better better experience right now. And I'll also, it's very important to note that um, every industry is a little bit different, especially when, they, when we try to use these mobile applications. So we, you have the, cap the capability to, um, configure, configure map styles in the way that reflect your branding, reflect your industry itself. And of course, everything is available from the, 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 the our developer portal. So not only in the map display section, the map, map display uh, family, not only uh, you can um, configure the, your, like how the map for you, it will look like, but it's, it's, all, it's, it's all vector based styles. We also have raster based styles, but most let's be honest most most of the developers and companies are using um vector vector tiles we support 23 zoom levels in over more, more than 170 countries and it's very important to be able to present the map depending on who is your user who is your viewer so that's why we have over 30 languages supported. So if you, you if you present the match from a someone in Romania, we'll see we'll see this in Rom Romanian. Or if you are in Israel, you will see the text and the text and the street level in Hebrew, for example. And places, yes, well, you know places. It's uh, yeah, it's uh, well we need. To, before before uh, sending people in routes, before sending people where to go and calculate the routes, we have to actually tell them where are these locations. Well, basically, we support in the search API not only point of interest, but also millions of four, over more 418 million uh, precise address points. And you can calculate a location between um, uh, addresses between locations, for example, and we are recent partnership with Foursquare. We have our in enhanced these APIs, in, sorry, enhanced these POIs, this, this point of interest with not only not only the location and specific uh, positions, but also ratings, reviews, and photos that you might also uh, have access in your application using as the same API key that you can get from our developer portal. You don't have to go and register anywhere else. You just hope the TomTom -tom APIs. So those are the basics mm -hmm. that uh, almost any application needs. You need to have that map layer, and you need to have that search engine to, uh, to search for destinations and places. Um, then the second part that uh, also a lot of you are probably building is uh, as part of your backend, uh, you want to be able to route vehicles, and you're probably operating very different vehicles from electric scooters to uh, heavy trucks. 
So this is uh, where having a very uh, customizable routing API is very important. Uh, and of course, uh, one thing that we see that comes back with every almost every mobility service out there is the need for accurate ETAs and travel times because they play a big role into driver satisfaction, of course, but also the user satisfaction. When I order my uh, taxi and it tells me it's going to be there in four minutes, I want it to be there in four minutes and not 12. Otherwise, there is a very poor uh, customer experience. And finding the best route is not trivial, especially when you're um, driving heavy vehicles. Uh, this is where uh, this is where at TomTom, -tom, because we've been uh, working with fleets for a very long time, we've developed a very cool uh, routing algorithm uh, that avoids these specific situations. Yes, uh, the routing API now also not only allows you to configure your uh, creation for automobiles, for cars, but also for commercial vehicles and to avoid things like what you saw in the picture. So quickly, uh, um, characteristics or features of the vehicle that your company or your client will be using and um, creates a totally different uh, type of routes that um, can be optimized for a specific um, industries. Could be for, for example, food deliveries, or in this case, uh, transportation and uh, transportation of heavy objects. We know we know already, for example, in in, in Europe, uh, we have the ADR uh, tunnel codes that are, are mandatory to certain trucks car, car carrying certain um, uh, objects, payloads that they, they cannot go through certain tunnels, for example, and that creates uh, conf conflict uh, routing uh, problems for fleet and management companies, for example. It's complex. So what can we what can we do? We 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 offer run and driving API, uh, something called predictive traffic also because we've been collecting traffic for over ten years, more than ten years already now, and that gives us a very good advantage to create very accurate estimated time of arrival. You know exactly how a specific root segments will behave at specific time of the year, literally in every day. We know exactly what March twenty second, on Tuesdays. In from noon to 2 p.m. will actually behave in certain parts of the world. Um, also, you can you can create a different type of um, uh, combinations. This combination for um, to, to, for example, if you want to transport from here to A to B and to C and to D in different locations, and you see okay, which one should I start my route principle? That's why you use the matrix routing API, for example. And on top of that, we have also the support for electric vehicles. We know exactly. Um, how much a uh, combustion engine uh, truck or car will use in certain locations. If you tell them how fast your engine is consuming data, uh, sorry, it's consuming uh, gasoline or diesel or kilowatts, uh, we can calculate how far can you go and they tell you where can you have you need to recharge, where, or where do you need to actually get better, a petrol station close by. Yeah. So with this uh, preamble, I'll, I'll, I'll like to switch a little bit the screen here because I want to show you the first one is the, uh, the first, first demo. It's about the truck and commercial vehicles in comparing and uh, how, how to go to a different location. And better is I'll show you. Let me see, better if I show you, how do I do this? I go back to my screen. I will stop, sharing. stop yeah. sharing here. Go back to our meeting. I think we're back. How's it now? Yeah, it's Gregory. Hello, Greg. How can I see you? Oh, he's back. He's <laughs> back. He's back. And now I'm going to present now another Chrome tab, and we're going to the uh, Job Dispatcher. Job Dispatcher. Oh, yeah, let's see. Voila. I hope everything in this one um, does Job Dispatcher. Oh, and Job Dispatcher is when you want to, uh, to go a specific route, and you have three possibilities. Yeah, uh, so this is a typical taxi dispatching taxi scenario, dispatching or scenario. Where yes. you have a number of drivers that are available to pick up jobs. And Jose is going to put them. Okay, let's see. One driver is uh, here, and another driver is around here, and another driver is, let's say, here. And then we're going to ask, okay, someone call, someone call and say, I want to go from point, e, point A to point B in around Varsovia. Uh, Varsovia. Let's go from here, let's say, uh, start, and I need to go up to here, finish. So we have a route. This is a normal um, a car, uh, normal auto, or auto route, and we have three possibilities. So, And you can see in the uh, left side, 
we have already pre-calculated how long will it take for each one of them to go and pick up the, the person, drive to their destination, and come back. Like for example, this one will say, well, a blue one will go have to go this way, and then I'll go and deliver this person here. The driver number two will go, oh, no, but I have to go this way, pick him up, and go this way. And it tells me, for example, in the left, that the blue one will take 16 minutes on, on normal traffic conditions. Traffic is included by default in every route calculations, unless you say no, or unless you are uh, calculating a pedestrian route, which is traffic is irrelevant. And I say, OK, you, blue number blue one, you can take the job. I could dispatch the job and let's let it go. And say, meanwhile, I say, okay, I'm going to go from this location, another person to this location. Finish. So we have another route from here to here. And uh, it tells you, okay, this one, uh, driver one is already engaged in transport, uh, going to pick up someone. So between these two, this will take 26 minutes and this will take 34 minutes. I say, Let's go and take the driver two, driver three, sorry, and then we'll start going to the destination. Now, the most important thing of the demo that I want to, show, to showcase here to you is the ability to calculate um, different estimated type of arrivals. And again, it's based perfectly for, for, uh, the, uh, for delivery. You can use it also for like um, when you're delivering food companies that is very popular after what the corona situation you could uh, people are calling on um, most of these uh, transportation company are using this in order to see which one which way you can go the next demo let's go let's demo um, so very important also to note is that on a developer portal you will find a actually detailed step-by-step -step tutorial to oh, uh, to do what we just demoed thank you uh, it's our taxi sure. dispatcher tutorial so um, yeah, you can build it yourself if you want. Okay. So next, we're going to have a look a bit at the truck routing. Truck routing. That's and how you can predict uh, different travel times uh, based on different departure okay. times. Okay. Let's do truck routing. Should be don't field management? No. No. It's job schedule. Yes. So in this one, uh, we are in Europe. And we are going to have a small, uh, not small, uh, let's, let's make a route from, uh, let's from Paris, start here, around Paris, 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 yeah. And let's say, let's go to uh, Luxembourg. Luxembourg, yeah, sounds that's good. Uh, Luxembourg, here. Yeah. All right, finish here. So, well, we, so the first thing that we can tell you is the first thing that we did is a normal route. And getting the guidance information from the road, I can see in, in what segment of the road actually we have to um, pay. This is the, actually the color changing is the toll roads, but um, that information of course comes com, com to you in the using the road in API. But saying okay, from here to here in this leg of the road, you actually have to. This is a toll road. Yeah. And as you can see in the left side, we have selected a car. This is a car route. And the moment we uh, let's, let's recalculate uh, to using a truck route. It will be a little bit probably, probably could be a little bit different. I want you to also take a look at the bottom of the uh, demo, which says it which says a little bit. If we get out now at 5 p.m., we will be arriving around 9:40 p.m. And because of traffic and traffic conditions on road condition, we'll be experiencing a delay of 41 minutes approximately. That's quite long. But if we just wait two more hours, exactly two more hours you see the delay is only 15 minutes. So you can say, oh, maybe I should send this truck or send this uh, in two hours from now. It's interesting, why just go higher and then go so low and then go higher again at 730? So that's the power of predictive traffic, which is uh, included by default in our routing API. You can set a departure date and a time date in the future uh, and get our best estimate of travel time based on that. And then you can optimize what time to leave um, hmm. to minimize the time on the road. Can we check uh, if it's a truck? Yes. Okay. Let's go, let's focus here. Let's change the truck. Did it change a bit? Yes, it did change a bit here, this area. And you could see also that uh, there is one more tollable segment. So in pink are the segments that are subject uh, to toll. Uh, that is also available in our uh, routing API. So we'll tell you, you can even uh, try to avoid them if there's a route that avoids them to minimize costs. 
Yeah, it would be a very funny it, route. Okay. You want to see? Because now I will try to avoid um, highways or toll roads as much as possible, and voila. Mm -hmm. It actually could be a little bit slower. Um, let me see. Uh, it's a less, less, less delay, actually. Less if delay, it's delay. Longer travel times. Longer travel times. Yeah. Six hours now. Instead of arriving at 9.30, 9.39, I'm arriving two hours later. But hey, if you need to pay. Now let's route a few electric vehicles if we still have time. Yes, uh, yes, we still have five more minutes. We'll go and stop. And uh, let's check it out with electric vehicles. How's it going, guys? Are you being uh, views okay? Okay, thank you. Yeah, let's go electric vehicles, EV assistant. Okay, we are again in Europe. We are. By default, we have the Tesla, but we have different models. What the objective of this demo is to showcase as an electric vehicle, how far can you go with your uh, battery charge, and how if you can actually get to your destination. For example, let's say in, 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 this, exa in this case, we have a, a Tesla Model S10, which we already have uh, information about it, that you can get freely available on any website, actually. And we want to drive all the way to it's Wolle. I say it's too close. A little bit farther. Bremen. 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 Route to here. Well, voila. It says, OK, you actually are in blue. That means with your current charge, which I put, I think, maximum charge already, you can actually manage to get to Bremen with one single charge. Right? Let's go um, a little bit farther. Can we do that? Berlin. Let's, Ber go, to let's Berlin. go to Berlin. Pronounce it out to Berlin. Oh. You will not make it then with the, what your charge. Let's check if a Nico route would save us a bit of energy. Let's see if a Nico route is, would, will save us around 1.2 kilowatts. Still safe. not enough. Still not enough. I cannot make it with, an, with my charge to, from Amsterdam to Berlin with this Tesla. So that's why we have another endpoint called the lean long distance route. It's, it's pretty similar to the um, normal routing API. It's just like it, can, it, it has more a little bit more restrictions because it's for mostly for um, uh, vehicles that needs uh, we need they need we need to know that's their consumption model. So, in in summary, what what we what we need to tell the routing API is we have this vehicle and this vehicle has so much energy capacity. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. So much energy capacity on it can be can be in liters for gasoline or diesel or it can be in kilowatts per hour. And say, well, this is the consumption. This is how fast or how slow it consume, consume while you are driving at certain speeds. And or for example, if you have also efficiency when you go uh, uphill or downhill efficiency, like you, you save also energy doing that. And then with that information, we can quietly accurately calculate how far can you go. So for example, let me see. Can we use the reachable range here? Yeah, show the range. Let's show the range. So. As you can see, with this Tesla, with that charge that I have, we can go up to well, this area here. Obviously, you're never going to make it to Berlin. Right? So that's why we can use the long distance routing. And it, it calculates, OK, we know those te uh, how fast Tesla can change. We know how far can you go a little bit. And when you are around, I think the minimum, the average is 25 to 30%. You can set the minimum battery. Yeah, minimum battery. Say, okay, you are around getting up to this area. And say, okay, and in this area, we have to say, okay, you need to find actually find a place to charge. I'm not going to just drop you in the middle of nowhere and say, that's not how you get it. You find some place to put to charge. We have to give you. That's why we have the search APIs that give you uh, locations of the, our, our charging stations. And yes, actually, you have to charge in Bremen. That's, the, I think, the most optimized version of Google. And if you go close by in Bremen, in this area, OK, it's, uh, it's calculated you have to charge one of these charges here. Unfortunately, this one, I don't have information. They're not available. They're not free. I mean, free as in, uh, um, let me click. Yeah, this one is a Tesla. It's a charging point. They have eight points, but we don't know exactly what what um, was available? Oh, you can actually go to this one. And this one has, well, it's not for Tesla, but it might be compatible for you. Oh, it has the IC, ISC 6096 Type 2. This is, you have the adapter. If you have the app, you can use it. It's close by. 
And oh, if you decided to charge there, for example, we can say what's what's around this area, and say well, you charge here and you have a restaurant here, if you need. So you can have a burger while you wait. Or a McDonald's, or <laughs> you fancier, you can go to Subway. Subway cool. is Subway fancier than McDonald's? That's a I question for our users. Wouldn't be the best judge of that. <laughs> yes, you are French. So that's what you can do around EVs, of course, consumption algorithms uh, for any type of electric vehicle. And because you can set all the parameters of the vehicles, we actually challenge you to test if you could adapt this algorithm for non-cars or other things than cars, like scooters. Yes. Um, because you can set the weight, the efficiency of the vehicles, there's no reason we shouldn't uh, try it. Um, of course, our range algorithms and our consumption algorithms they also work for traditional conventional engines um, because it's the you just have to adjust the parameters and we can also give you fuel consumption for a truck or any normal car. Well, with this, we go uh, finish our uh, third demo and I only have, I think, full 10 minutes for questions now. Yeah, so, um, okay, guys, yeah, let's maybe thank go you so to much. The, uh, Thank you so yep. much, guys. Let's go through the question. So, so first, thank you so much for taking over when I when I was having my technical issues, and I think you did an amazing job. And uh, and now I, I wanted to explain the rules, but uh, uh, now we are already uh, on track. Uh, just to tell everyone that uh, we have some time for question and answers. Uh, we will uh, we will allow ourselves to uh, to have a ten to fifteen minutes uh, question and answers. Uh, I suggest that you enter your name uh, in the chat, and then I will give you the floor so you can uh, so we make it a little more interactive and not only reading questions from the chat. Uh, I uh, I already see two questions, and uh, if there are too many of them, we will ask you to write your questions, and Tom Tom will answer it eventually if they don't have time to answer during the during the call. Um, so, we'll start with uh, Erdem Ovacic. Erdem, are you here? And uh, would you mind unmute your microphone and set up your first question, please? Okay, Erdem. Them. Okay, uh, I will uh, I will read these questions. So Louis and uh, Jose, uh, yeah. Adam was asking you: Does TomTom -tom do routing for bikes, and do you have bike lanes mapped in your platforms? So we do uh, we do route for uh, bikes, so, but uh, we do not take into account the uh, bike lanes. So we will route and avoid the dangerous roads. And we have an algorithm that's optimized for that, but it does not. Uh, yeah, we don't have all the bike lanes mapped in our data at the moment. Some countries have specific bike lanes and we still don't have, um, they're, they're changing, being constructed all the time. So I think um, the routing for routing for for bicycles has been, it's a historical one basic, ba based on the, uh, on the normal, uh, normal speed of a bicycle from uh, five kilometer to 25 kilometers per hour. And there are some places that you are not allowed, of course, no highways. And, and no, not not all roads, not specific types, just normal streets. So yes, we can route a, a, a bicycle, but it will not be um, totally accurate with the bike with the bike lanes and and of course with some restrictions as well. Yeah, so you can see it. actually they use it. They use it. Uh, there are two companies using it here in the Netherlands because we do have bike lanes, and and but also uh, also one in uh, I think in Spain is also bike lanes, but they, they their bike lanes are used to work in the seat in the street as well. I think it's Valencia. Okay, okay. sorry. I have another question from Ono. They are asking if the presentation will be made available afterwards. Yes, of course. We'll, we'll share the presentation with links to uh, useful resources like tutorials if you want to try and build uh, ourselves, uh, yourselves. And then, of course, you'll have our contact details. We're always happy to help you, guide you, advise you on uh, you know, how to best make use of location in your uh, yeah, startup. Thank you. Um, Elio, Andrea, Adinolfi, 
is uh, as a question. I suggest, Enyo, you turn on your, your microphone and ask your question directly. Maybe it will be better to have the, uh, the direct chat with uh, our hosts. I see the question is about elevation profile, so perhaps I'll, uh, I'll answer directly. So we take into account elevation uh, in our routing APIs. We take it into account to calculate our travel times, of course. Uh, we also take it into account in our eco routing algorithms to, uh, to minimize the fuel consumption for a route. Uh, however, right now we don't have an API that returns the elevation profile specifically for a route. Um, that's something we're working on. It's not yet available in our APIs if it's really the profile you're interested in. That's good. Hello. Any other questions? Don't be shy. If you're shy, you can use the chat. Thank you. I couldn't uh, unmute my microphone. Can you hear me now? Yes. 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 Okay. Yes, my question was related to the uh, fuel consumption linked to the elevation profile because I would like to know if there is any uh, API or any function for the track uh, consumption? Yes, yeah, so we, we can calculate the, the consumption for a truck and that will take into account what we call gradients, so whether the road is going uphill or downhill. Uh, so yes, that will be taken into account in our consumption models. Um, we have some customers like um, uh, Daimler Trucks, I believe, uh, is actually using this data to do some intelligence uh, cruise control so that the, the, the truck can a downgrade uh, the, or up, ah. upshift and downshift mm. uh, when it's approaching uphill and downhill roads. Uh, so this data is actually quite uh, valuable for uh, advanced driving assistance systems. And that's available in the routing API consumption uh, algorithms. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't see any other question in the chat. Should we wait for a few seconds? What what I suggest is um, that we that we stop the session now for uh, the first part of our session with uh, with TomTom -Tom now, and that if you have any new question, because I guess it's a lot to digest, if you have any new questions that is coming to your mind, or if you want to get in contact directly with uh, with TomTom, -Tom, I just suggest that uh, you write to uh, that you write to me and or directly to TomTom. -Tom. Normally, you've been in touch with them at least for those who received the the price of uh, one million APIs for those from the top 50 of this year. So um, so don't hesitate. I will gladly uh, connect you with uh, our TomTom -Tom developers. Um, Luis Rosé. Unless you you have anything to add to this session, we'll uh, switch to the second half. Uh, I let you tell me if you are uh, if you want to say uh, a few words of uh, conclusion. Ah, excellent. We we run out of time, so there there will be more in the slides that we will share uh, than what we presented Correct. today. But we'll make sure to add uh, all the useful links to uh, yes. tutorials, examples, demos, and we're always happy to help. Uh, the, our contact details are on that slide. Um, always feel free to reach out, even if it's just for advice. Um, we have a lot. Of, we work with a lot of companies. Like, we can probably uh, exchange some ideas there. Yeah. And thanks for. Uh, Thank you for having us. Today. Yes. Thank you for having us. Yes. Thank you, guys. It's my pleasure, and we really wanted to offer to uh, to our startup this opportunity to connect with you guys because. Uh, uh, among the opportunities that we want to offer to the startups, we want to give them the opportunity to uh, uh, to have new cooperation with the European ecosystem, and you are obviously part of it. So thank you, guys. Thank you. Uh, without further notice, I suggest we uh, we jump uh, into the uh, second session. Uh, we're talking about opportunities, opportunities. Uh, uh, yeah. In this uh, new session, you will have the opportunity to better understand what uh, EU fundings are about. Uh, the European Startup Prize covers a fair part of uh, uh, of the EU fundings, and uh, we'll try to to put you on a fast track to these EU fundings. But uh, there is much more than that, and. Uh, uh, 
in particular due to the COVID uh, social economic crisis or due to the Green Deal. So, so you will see that uh, it's also an ecosystem to, uh, uh, to understand uh, uh, what are the EU funding for innovations. Uh, we'll have our friends from the Eurotran uh, consultancy firm who are there to present you uh, this uh, ecosystem of the EU fundings. I will give the floor to Dan Wolf and Bastien Farge, both partners at the uh, Eurotran company, and we'll go for a 30 minutes presentation with all of them, with both of them, and then another 15 minutes of the question and answers and uh, following the same rules as uh, as we did earlier. So, um, uh, uh, Dan, if you want to, yeah. to take the floor, I sure. gladly give it to you. And uh, thank you so much for being here today. Yeah, thank you, Greg. Thank you to the colleagues from TomTom. Tom. They gave a very concrete presentation. We will try to make uh, EU funding opportunities also very concrete. Our objective uh, with this session is to give you a sense of what's available out there in terms of EU monies that can uh, be um, invested in your companies, in your projects. But we will have, of course, to stick to the helicopter view today uh, to give you hints because you come from uh, uh, different uh, or you have different types of projects and we, we cannot deep dive into each one of them today. So as Greg uh, hinted, hinted upon, uh, since 2018, that was the time when there was an EU budget of about uh, 1 trillion uh, euros on the table for the next seven years, where things have changed. And this budget had to be revised due to the new commission and the so-called European Green Deal, but also now to COVID. And that's what we tried and illustrate here on this uh, the, the slide with the, the figures, the, the next one. Uh, lots of figures out there, but just to show you that in essence, with COVID, more money is available. You know, it's a bit of a paradox. We are entering the crisis, but public money will be more available. Uh, national budgets, it's the same, but EU budget, uh, will uh, will um, offer more opportunities to uh, startups in particular. Uh, is it good for startups active in cleaner mobility? Possibly, uh, but you have to handle your application in a smart way. Uh, does it mean that some of you, if you look at these figures, we're talking billions, so hundreds of billions of euros. Does it mean that some of you will get a free lunch? The answer is clearly no. Uh, you should know that there is no such thing as a, as a free lunch, but also uh, you also have experience yourself. And we will go to the next slide, please. You have experience yourself of having qualified for the EU startup prize. So that means you are able to, to draft a convincing uh, application to pitch investors. Uh, and to some extent, application for EU fundings are comparable. They are not the same, but they are comparable, but this time you have to work out, out the right category uh, that you want to punch in because some applications are much more demanding or at least more time consuming than what you did for the EU startup price. That's not to belittle the startup price, uh, but the level of investment that you would put in the application is also going to be rewarded by a certain level of co-funding. So that I think is very good news. Uh, and another good news, and I'll finish there, uh, is that uh, on all this, we will go through the wheel now. And on most programs that are listed here, uh, partnering gives you a bonus. So if you are the partnering type, uh, well, it's good news because you will get uh, extra money or more opportunities uh, in terms of quantity of uh, of projects that, that you can apply for or, or uh, programs that you can apply for. And I'll give now the floor to Bastien, who will elaborate on, on the first of these uh, programs. 
Thank you, Dan, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. So my name is Bastien, and uh, I'm very pleased to see you all today. Um, so today we will get you a first overview, as Dan said, um, and we will firstly uh, develop an uh, European Structural Investment Funds, also known as uh, Cohesion Funds or Regional Funds. Uh, the first one is the European Regional Development Fund um, and the Cohesion Fund. Um, so um, it is uh, it used to represent uh, uh, thirty percent of the EU budget, um, but now it will be slightly slightly uh, less. Uh, but it's still uh, the biggest uh, budget opportunity for. Um, all EU uh, stakeholders and uh, especially startups. Uh, as you see, there is uh, five uh, um, objectives and five uh, priorities. And one is um, uh, greener carbon free Europe and smarter Europe. Uh, within these two uh, priorities, SMEs are um, well targeted and uh, within the European Regional Development Fund, which is used in, which is, um, um, which will uh, benefit to all startups in Europe and the cohesion fund, with, uh, which is uh, dedicated to um, Eastern countries. Um, there is uh, all, more than um, two th uh, 200 billion euros. So it's uh, very, um, it's a very big opportunity, and the biggest opportunity is it that is a um, national. It's it is uh, managed at a national level or regional level. So that means that uh, it is not the European Commission that um, uh, manage and uh, decide uh, where the money goes, but uh, it is a um, government or regional government. So if you have um, very good relations uh, with your um, uh, national government or regional government, it is a good thing because you will get uh, a lot of opportunity. For, for instance, as you see, there is some example and the first uh, SME is um, a French program dedicated to um, the southwest region in France and it's super, it is um, a pro, um, a financial instrument that uh, will support uh, SMEs through loans, guarantees, equities. Uh, as you see, the total budget is uh, important for a single region in Europe. So uh, it is one kind of uh, support that uh, the regional funds can give to you, but uh, it is um, very different from uh, a region to another. So. Um, our first um, advice today is to go to, to your um, uh, local governments and ask uh, what opportunities uh, you, you could uh, have. Um, then here you will see Interreg. Interreg is a program that is dedicated to um, cross-border cooperation. So you need to have a um, partnership with uh, other uh, SMEs or universities or uh, local institutions in uh, other EU countries. And it will give you a small amount of money, but it is very useful to start a cooperation. And SMEs and the support to SMEs is one of the priority of the Interact programs. Uh, as you see next is the, is the Just Transition Fund. It is part of the EU Green Deal. That is um, the climate, the climate strategy uh, developed by the European Union and the European Commission for the next years, and it is um, money that is dedicated to um, the region most affected by uh, climate and energy transitions, uh, mainly in Germany and Poland, but uh, also all over Europe. And uh, it is uh, managed in the same way that the cohesion fund. So uh, I, I, I will let you um, see on the um, 
the um, uh, regional fund slide uh, the the mechanism. Uh, here you are. Uh, it is uh, firstly um, here just transition fund the um, regional port, and you also have uh, uh, loan and equity through InvestEU, and we will get. Uh, uh, an investor later. Uh, then the resilience and recovery facility is part of the recovery plan uh, published by the European Commission uh, in uh, May. It is um, dedicated uh, to support uh, member states uh, you may have uh, seen in uh, newspapers that the European Commission is proposing to um, to borrow uh, money uh, instead of member states uh, to support member states' economy. So it is a resilience and recovery facility. It is money borrowed by the Commission, and uh, the Commission will then give the money to member states to support the economy. So it is not directly managed by the European Commission, but uh, as a cohesion fund, it's managed by uh, the national authorities. There is five priorities. So competitiveness and productivity, um, and um, education and skills uh, may be the, the most um, interesting for you. Uh, it is really difficult now to um, to, to see uh, what this uh, facility um, will support in the future because uh, it is not uh, um, already um, established and uh, we will have to see in details what the Europe, what the EU institution will uh, decide in the coming uh, weeks. And um, on the LIFE program, which is the Environment and Climate Change um, program from the European Commission, I will let uh, Dan uh, develop a little bit. Uh, Dan, sorry, you have your mic up. You need to unmute yourself first. <laughs> Apologies for that. <laughs> So uh, that's why I'm allowing myself to... Uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Apologies for that. Go ahead. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, so climate change and environment uh, may be topics that uh, a lot of you may be working on. Uh, and uh, the life, so-called life program uh, of the European Commission will distribute uh, about 5 billion euros uh, in the coming seven years. So big opportunity out there, especially in the field of nature and biodiversity. I mean, you see the list here, but in essence, it's whenever we're talking about emissions, pollutions, biodiversity, then life may be the right program. What are the eligible costs? You see here our uh, um, little um, uh, infographics. Uh, you may finance part of your staff costs if you have an investment to be made, also research and uh, innovation, and even so-called indirect costs are eligible. So it's quite a generous uh, scheme, uh, all the more as you may uh, apply as a single applicant, you do not have to have a partnership, but again, it's a bonus that you can get. And again, if you are active in the climate change uh, and environment, you should definitely try your, your luck with uh, life because the application is easy. You would have to fill in a form of about 10 pages first. That's the first step. And then you may get to the second round if you are qualified and you then produce a more elaborate application. But at least you know you're not uh, putting too much effort in one go. Uh, then the co-financing rate is important, up to 60%, so that's quite generous in relative terms, uh, and you would have enough time to prepare. So again, you should definitely look closely at the LIFE program, and on the next slide you see an example of a company, or rather a consortium, 
that has um, gained about a million euros from uh, life in the past years. And uh, it's funny because there was this question about elevation uh, to uh, raise to TomTom -tom before. And so this project aimed, amongst others, as calculating fuel consumptions depending on of trucks, huh, like in the question before, uh, uh, but depending on the route. So, of course, elevation and topography was taken into account, and they got, uh, again, uh, more than 50% of their cost being co-funded by the LIFE program for one-year project. Uh, then we're moving uh, to another uh, funding source, uh, which is called COSME, and that's specific on the next slide, please. Bastien, you're in. Thank you. Uh, we can move to the, to the next one. So it's specific to SMEs, not necessarily in research, not necessarily in uh, uh, environment, uh, but here you see a list. Uh, it may echo uh, some of the um, activities that the uh, Startup Price is doing. Uh, and this time it's about getting a finance for, again, a number of activities from staff to uh, research and investment and indirect costs being covered. Uh, the application is easy, but the budgets, as you can see, are limited. We have less than 4 billion uh, and it's decreasing. Uh, so SMEs are well served by this program, by definitions, it's really targeted at SMEs but the overall envelope is not so generous. Uh, and now we're moving to a much more generous uh, program uh, that Bastien will explain, uh, but also relatively more difficult to, to apply for. So uh, Horizon Europe, and uh, now it's still Horizon 2020, it's a um, research and innovation program from the European Commission. Uh, there is uh, three pillar, but the most interesting for you is a second pillar uh, that uh, supports uh, research and innovation in global challenges. Uh, as you see, uh, it is slightly different uh, in your Horizon Europe than in uh, Horizon 2020, but it's still uh, the, the most important for you is a climate, energy, and mobility um, challenge. Uh, and why is it uh, in, interesting and uh, important for you? Is the, the budget first? It's uh, 100 billion euro that will be uh, distributed uh, mainly uh, through grants. So it's not loans or equity or guarantee, but it is it is grants with a very high uh, co-financing rate, which could be up to uh, 100 percent. So it is uh, the entire project could be uh, supported through the Horizon um, Europe program. Uh, so the budget is huge. The co-financing rate is huge. The um, opportunities are huge because uh, SMEs are eligible to the to the um, program. Uh, uh, on the, the eligible cost staff, uh, research and in innovation program and uh, activities, uh, indirect cost, uh, um, intellectual work and uh, investment and pilot project are eligible. The, the, um, uh, on the other hand, obstacles are the, the the criteria to uh, be eligible and to uh, apply to the, the, the funds. Uh, firstly, it's not possible to be a single applicant. You need to have uh, at least uh, two other uh, partners from two other member states. So it's a, a complicated, um, it's a complex uh, way to ask money because you need to have uh, uh, partners from other countries, so with other uh, management culture, other uh, languages often, and uh, it is the, the most difficult part of the, the application. On the other hand, you also have a two steps uh, application uh, um, 
uh, period. Uh, the first one you 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 would have to uh, present part of the, your project and uh, a general description, and then a complete a complete description. Um, generally, there is one call for proposals per year, but it is not uh, uh, all challenges are not at the same time. So you would have. Uh, multiple opportunities uh, over the years. And the, the first um, work program will be published uh, at the end of the year. So um, by December, you will have a complete uh, view on the next year's opportunities. Uh, one uh, concrete example is the um, uh, Tarform project. Tarform maybe uh, uh, it's part of your um, own ecosystems in uh, the SMEs and uh, mobility uh, European ecosystem. It is not a fully Europe a full European uh, startup. It is also based in uh, the United States, but it, it gets uh, funds to uh, develop its uh, its product. Uh, it is. Um, uh, motorcycle and it will use uh, intelli uh, artificial intelligence and um, electricity. It is a two uh, main um, innovations in the, the, the product. Uh, in Eurasian uh, Europe, you will also add the EIT, which is the uh, European uh, Institute for Technology, uh, which gather um, innovation communities, and uh, you, uh, sorry, uh, you may know uh, some uh, of them uh, as um, at the EIT uh, Kick Climate or EIT Kick Energy or EIT Kick uh, Urban Mobility. Um, some of them are part of the um, startup price uh, ecosystem. Um, uh, mainly uh, the key climate and key uh, energy. And uh, what they do is to develop uh, innovative products and services, uh, gathering um, universities, uh, uh, companies, and uh, institutions to uh, work together and to uh, promote a European ecosystem uh, on a specific challenge. So uh, the, they propose, they uh, offer uh, funding opportunities which are um, uh, quite low compared to uh, others. But the, the important fact it is it's that is. Um, are very uh, easy to apply. Uh, you can be uh, alone. Uh, it is uh, in one, two, three weeks. Uh, and uh, you, for now, st uh, it is not a very competitive um, uh, call for proposals. So there is a huge uh, success rate. Uh, and that means uh, what you uh, all the efforts you can make uh, in the um, in the application, you will get a, a, a lot in return. But uh, and then on the same uh, way that the uh, European Institute of Technology, you have the joint undertakings. Uh, you may know. Uh, some of them uh, as a CISO or a shift to rail, which are part of the um, uh, European startup uh, communities too. Um, it is a joint venture uh, with the uh, uh, gathering the European Commission, uh, uh, universities and um, companies. So, uh, for instance, Shift to Rail is uh, dedicated to uh, rail and the future of rail. Caesar on the sky and the development of uh, new technologies. Uh, the FCIH is on uh, hydrogen and um, uh, fuel cells. 
So there is a wide scope uh, of the of uh, EU um, main uh, challenges, and uh, they they offer um, also uh, opportunities through uh, call for proposals. Uh, for EIT and uh, joint undertakings, uh, part of the difficulty uh, for you is that um, it is way more. Uh, it is way more. Um, this way easier to get uh, fundings when you are part of the partnership. Uh, it is, uh, uh, for instance, in the key climate. Uh, or the key urban mobility. If you're already a core partner, you will get uh, more opportunities because uh, you already give some money to enter the, the partnership, and you will get um, uh, more in return. Um, it is just the next uh, joint undertakings that are in negotiation now. Uh, so on, on Earth, but the more interesting for you is maybe uh, on mobility, so air traffic, aviation, and rail. And uh, the other part, the uh, innovative SME undertaking. Uh, then it is um, uh, another part of the EU possibility to, to fund uh, SMEs, it, it invest EU, uh, which is a successor of, <coughs> of um, the Juncker plan. Um, it is managed by the European Investment Bank, and it's only um, a financial instrument. You can't uh, get grants from invest EU, but only loans, equity, guarantee. Um, the most interesting part is that uh, uh, one policy window is specifically dedicated to SMEs and another part to uh, sustainable infrastructure. The last one, uh, strategic European investment, is um, part of the recovery plan uh, as it uh, aims to at supporting um, strategic ecosystems, so strategic uh, industries uh, in Europe. There is a lot of budget, and um, the, um, the application and the, um, the, the, the application is uh, relatively uh, easy to, uh, to manage because of uh, the um, the mentoring uh, by the Europe, the European Investment Bank itself. So you don't have to uh, wait for call for proposals. You can um, you can get in touch directly with the European Investment Bank, present your project, and then uh, they will give you um, input to improve your your proposals, and then you will be able to. Um, submit it and uh, get the best uh, opportunities. Uh, here you have the main the main um, budgets and as you see it's 10 billion budget for SMEs. 10 billion it's just uh, what the European Union will um, uh, will uh, uh, we'll use to guarantee the the the, the fund, uh, but uh, actually it will be uh, ten or um, it's actually ten in the European Commission uh, mind. But uh, you you will have almost hundred billion euro accessible through the InvestEU program. One example of what uh, the European Investment Bank can provide to SMEs is uh, um, the support to Bolt. Uh, Bolt is an Estonian startup. Uh, it's uh, for uh, it was uh, known as uh, Taxify before, but it's um, a ride-hailing company, 
and uh, the uh, European Investment Bank uh, provide uh, 50 million euro uh, through a loan to develop um, uh, its software platform and to uh, um, get new markets. Uh, and uh, it's not uh, the only uh, startup that will, uh, would be supported by uh, the European Investment Bank. As you see before, the um, policy uh, window uh, dedicated to SME is uh, a huge part of the program. Yeah, and um, I'll, I'll take over. Uh, Greg, how much time do we have? We are almost done, but uh, I just wanted to give a time for questions. I think in five minutes, more or less, we can we can wrap up and then okay. go to questions. Okay. Yeah? So, so for those who have questions, please start writing your name in the chat box, and uh, we give you another five uh, minutes to uh, to conclude. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Uh, so I, I will go very quickly through the last uh, opportunities. N namely, one is the Connecting Europe facility. On the next slide, please. Um, uh, we we mention it because it is really focused on transport. It has a huge budget, but in your case, we are talking mostly about infrastructure. So. Uh, you may have some money for mobile assets, but it's mostly infrastructure, all modes with a preference for rail or green modes. Um, and uh, you see here again on the spider web uh, that SMEs have a relatively uh, easy access, uh, that they can be a single applicant, but definitely the applications, believe you me, uh, it's very heavy. Uh, it takes a lot of time. You have to usually uh, draft a cost-benefit analysis. Uh, so it's not the kind of uh, application you draft in, in a week. Um, we will just give you an appealing example on the, on the slide uh, with the example of the uh, company called Ultra E, uh, where the project is Ultra E from Allego. Uh, and this company got uh, 6.5 million euros for deploying uh, fast chargers uh, on several routes. Uh, they had uh, in total 25 ultra fast chargers, so we're talking about really hard infrastructure, and they got 50% of co-funding for their works within three years more or less. Uh, so uh, very relevant. Uh, and that shows actually that in your business models, uh, if you have really a case for getting subsidies or, as Bastien explained, uh, sometimes loans, uh, you really have an interest in identifying them upstream. Look at the funding gap uh, and think clearly, how do I want to fill in that gap and I can get millions of euros uh, if my application is convincing again. Uh, and then last but not least these days, uh, the solvency support instrument, uh, which is really clearly uh, COVID related, uh, because it's about, um, in a way, um, refunding. Again, it's, it's part of the recovery. Uh, to, uh, to make sure that companies, um, through a funding scheme that, is, that does not imply um, grants, but loans only, that you are fit to uh, keep your activities going. Uh, so now to, to wrap up, really, we have this uh, wheel of, uh, thank you, uh, of all the different uh, opportunities out there. Again, there is no free lunch. Um, you should think first, do I want to, I am, am I ready to go for loans only, equities, or I really desperately need to get a subsidy? And then what is the level of uh, grant or subsidy that I need? And which project am I uh, ticking the boxes of? 
so that's the really uh, preliminary strategy. And then comes the application itself. But uh, I think it's more interesting to, to take questions uh, than explaining the, the, the application process. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Dan and Bastien, both of you. Uh, yeah, it's uh, as you're as you're saying, it's very complex. There are very different types of uh, of grants, of grants and loans. And um, okay, it's uh, it needs to be explored by the startups a little further. Uh, I let you digest and maybe find some question to ask to uh, to Dan and Bastien. Uh, I just uh, um, I, ju I just want to get to to say in one sentence that with the European startup price, European startup price is not part of uh, these uh, uh, grants that uh, because we are we are not providing grants directly, but we are providing a fast track to European investors. So it means we have special partnerships with the European Investment Bank, with the EIT No Energy, as uh, Bastien mentioned, with the EIT Urban Mobility. And um, in, in those partnerships, uh, you, uh, it doesn't mean that you will have a systematic grant from those European bodies, but uh, we, we are kind of labelizing your solution uh, so when uh, you apply to those uh, to those programs or grants, uh, they see you with a positive eye. So it can only help to be among the top 50 of the European Startup Prize, and it can only help to be part of our program. Um, I see that we have a few uh, that we have a few questions that are coming already. We'll start with uh, Bernard from Cargometer. Uh, you wrote your questions, but Bernard, w would you like to uh, uh, to ask your question directly? You. Yes, I do. So, hi, Bernard from Vienna is speaking. I think you can hear me, isn't it? Yeah, great. Uh, just a short question. Uh, we have developed a solution to perform measurement on the flying forklift. Uh, we have we were actually granted some loans already from Austria. And as we have developed our project, we have used these loans to develop our project, which finally results in negative equity. Uh, we have learned in Austria that having ne negative equity in the balance sheet is something that uh, stops you from getting any grants anymore. Is this the same with the European grants? All right. Honestly, I don't know. Uh, I don't know about you, uh, Bastien, but uh, it's the first time that we get that question. But we, we can look into it. It would be great because for us it's so strange because we have we have developed our solution that can save up to, let's say, 2 billion driven kilometers in Europe only. Uh, and we were financed by loans and now we are not eligible for grants anymore well, because we have spent the money. What I can tell you, uh, Bernard, is that um, uh, you have to fill in uh, in the application, uh, let's say, a form that you comply with all legal rules that you uh, are compliant with the uh, public. Uh, uh, the marché public uh, procurement rules and so on. I mean basic rules i don't think negative equity is a is a burden or is a hurdle in from a legal point of view but we would need to look at, uh, into your question in more detail okay thank you for this yeah. okay and how to make that i mean are you uh because is eurotran a partner that provides consultancy services or are you a part of the of the European startup price helping us to, to resolve these questions? No, we are independent consultants and uh, we are uh, assisting companies and public authorities when they apply, first of all, to identify the opportunities out there, as uh, we did today, uh, very roughly, uh, and then to apply for EU funds. Okay, thank you for this. You're welcome. And the second question, I think Bastien has a clear idea on that one. Yeah, it's 
It's Natalia Tomiyama. Natalia, can you hear us? And would you like to ask your question directly? Uh, yes. Can you hear me? Great. Yeah, so we received a Horizon 2020 grant last year, so it's still running. And the one which is highly com competitive. And the question is if we are eligible to apply for the loans, um, you know, one of the programs you mentioned, like Life Program or Cosme, um, in parallel, or, or we should wait once the grant is, uh, you know, finished and whether we are at all eligible to apply after the being granted. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Natalia. Um, the, um, <clears throat> by principle, in, uh, uh, from the European Commission and the European funds, you can accumulate, uh, you can't accumulate uh, uh, multiple grants or programs uh, for the same costs, but uh, if the costs are different, if you have a new project or a new development plan or uh, other costs incur in the next uh, years, uh, you are obviously eligible uh, to EU grants or EU uh, loans or equity or, or guarantees. But it is uh, the, the, the main uh, barrier is the cost. It's not the company, it's the cost. You have, mm -hmm. If you want to uh, get more money for the same costs and the same project, or no. mm -hmm. okay, yeah, uh, thanks a lot. So basically, uh, the Horizon Twenty Twenty covers the development costs, so it's uh, research and uh, development, um, and we're planning, uh, you know, but we also need the um, uh, the investment for uh, commercialization, basically, uh, and that's what we're planning to do either to um, raise the equity with external investors or consider loan, the loan option. Yeah, so thanks. Thanks for answering. Thank you, Natalia. Sorry, I, I was fighting with the, with the button to, uh, <laughs> to turn on my microphone. Thank you so much, Natalia. I hope it answers all of your questions. Yeah, uh, thanks. You can still contact her uh, because this is the question from Wolfgang as well. So uh, Bastien and Dan has obviously email addresses. It's it's now shown on the screen, so you can still contact them if you have uh, further questions. Uh, now back to François. François Tournade, would you like to take the floor for your question, please? Yep. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, ah, great. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. I just want to know um, during the, the presentation, I saw the uh, Occitanie region based in France. Uh, I would just want to know if you know, you have a list of uh, which organization managed um, the help to start up for, for apply. Yes, uh, each and every region has a contact point. Uh, yep. You may find this information online, but we will make it available also. Uh, I mean, definitely uh, French. There you go. Uh, you, you have it in the chat from Bastien. OK, thank you, Bastien. Perfect. I, I just precise, it's not uh, the specific contact point for, for the Foster SME uh, fund, uh, but it's uh, you, you can get all uh, information from uh, all managing authorities, so the authorities that manage uh, the European funds in uh, regions. So for all over in Europe, you, you will find here the, the contact point. Okay, then, thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Francois, for your question. Uh, I see that uh, uh, we are running out of time. I, su I, su I suggest that we take the other two questions that are in the chat. Uh, so there is one question from uh, Melina. Melina Gra Graovac, are you still there? And do you want to ask your question, please? Yes, I'm still there. Um, this presentation has been quite overwhelming. We as a startup based in Germany, we haven't 
apply to any grants or fundings yet. If for us as a startup, a startup where would you start um, with fundings? Because there has been there are so many opportunities. Um, would you consider a consulting for funding? Uh, as consultants, uh, the answer you can imagine is yes. Uh, so we are providing these services. Uh, however, uh, the point is not to oversell what we are doing on, for some programs, and that uh, makes a link with the next question also. Huh? For some programs, you also have within your local authorities, I think in Germany it's quite developed, uh, or national authorities, um, some one-stop shops, contact points in particular. I'm taking the example of the LIFE program, where normally uh, you have a, a very competent person at national level that is also helping out uh, SMEs, startups, uh, to go through the draft application and uh, and give them uh, let's say the the right tips to uh, to uh, apply uh, so yes it's a it's a complicated uh, world out there uh, we've only showed you the most relevant uh, funding sources for startups in the mobility world uh, but it takes additional time and efforts to really dig, depending on your own project, but we'll be happy to be in touch at a later stage with those of you who are willing to apply for EU funds and to run a very quick and dirty uh, opportunity analysis to know whether uh, you should get started uh, rather sooner than later. Uh, and in relation to Enyo's question, but uh, uh, Enyo, I'll let you ask your question if you're still here yes i'm still here thank you for uh actually um i was uh the question is related to the slide you showed about uh, another uh, project echo travid that has similar similar object of, of my startup so the question is since um, there is already a grant for this kind of topic is it still possible for my startup to ask for a european grant with uh, very very close to an old one yeah so the answer to that is um eco travel got uh, more than a million euros because they had re, uh, applied for a specific call for project the first uh, question to ask is will there be a similar call for project within the life program in the years ahead uh, if so you may of course apply but then the second question is the added value of your own proposal, of your own project, compared to what's available on the market already. Uh, and there, you see, uh, you get grades from evaluators in each and every application, and maybe there on the relevance or the quality, uh, you may get lower grades, bearing in mind that there has been a project uh that is very similar to yours where you, where you therefore do not bring added value okay i got it okay thank you you're welcome so i thought we had exhausted all the questions but there is another one from wolfgang wolfgang i'm not sure i understand what you mean would you <laughs> would you like to uh to take the floor and ask uh, uh, your question personally, please. Basically, it's not a question. It was just a uh, um, uh, further explanation to what Dan said uh, regarding to, to Melina's uh, question. So uh, as I'm working uh, as one of the partners of the Enterprise Europe Network, so what I wanted to share with the others is that uh, these partners exist all over Europe, uh, public institutions. 
not focusing too much in depth on the on the consultancy as uh, the colleagues from Eurotron do, but providing, let's say, first service uh, with regard to, to European funding. So what these partners can do is at least show the first way and help a first orientation uh, within these uh, funding jungle. But then when it comes to the detailed uh, analysis and the detailed support, then of course it's the, the consultancies like Eurotron who are, who, who are much better positioned. That's just what I wanted to add. So you, you, you still recommend to be part of a, an Enterprise Europe network? Well, I, um, my suggestion would be for those uh, startups and companies who look for uh, European funding, have a look at your local partner of the Enterprise Europe Network. Just Google Enterprise Europe Network and then, then the name of your city and you will find your local contact point. Um, or I can I can share the uh, the official website in the chat. Maybe that's easier as well. I'm going to do that in a second. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, then, Bastien, we have no we have no other questions. So I will. Uh, if you want to conclude with a short sentence about your presentation or any other things that comes to your mind, please. Uh, the floor is yours. Oh, and thank you. Yeah, no, it's a word of thank you to having, uh, to, for having given us the opportunity to to introduce some of you to EU funds. Thank you, Wolfgang, also for your remark. Uh, we always uh, pride ourselves with telling the clients or potential clients, please exhaust actually all the free uh, tools that are available. Do that and then come to us because that's where we would bring uh, added value. So. Uh, please uh, go and meet uh, Wolfgang's uh, colleagues uh, and then that will help you refine your needs uh, and then you come to us only for what you need and not for what you thought you had needed in the first place. Very wise. But uh, yeah, and uh, and just, I, w I, have, uh, I don't have lots of things to add, but uh, I would just remind you that uh, we are a label of quality. The solutions that we are labelizing, the top 50, for instance, but even more because we have ranked uh, the long list of the 550 uh, applicants uh, that apply to the startup prize this year. Uh, so we, we're, by, do, by doing so, we, we can really help you. I would encourage you to apply to the European, um, to the EU programs and fundings and grants because the, our brand is very strong within the European Union uh, uh, investment bodies. And uh, if, uh, if we can help you anyhow to get those investments, we'll uh, also do our best, uh, thanks to the help of uh, consultancy firms like, uh, like Eurotrans, uh, thanks to the help of our partners uh, like TomTom, we'll, uh, we'll do our best to uh, help your startup grow. So this is the final uh, uh, message that I wanted to, uh, to, to tell all of you. Uh, thank you uh, so much for being here with us today. Thank you, Louis. Thank you, Jose. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Bastien. And uh, I hope uh, that if you have any question, at least you have uh, the right contact address to email uh, from now. I'm uh, disconnecting the chat and I'm wishing you all a very nice evening. Bye-bye.